uh, welcome to the first um, webinar for the GSHPA for 2021. We are a little bit late starting, but definitely better late than never. Uh, the, we've got a really good program of webinars already lined up, taking us to the end of April. Uh, today's uh, webinar is all about the, the current policy landscape and talking a bit about you know where we see the market going this year which obviously is great interest to anybody working in uh, the heat pump industry um, just before we start I would uh, encourage you to use the chat function there will be time at the end for question and answer uh, so please do put any questions in there uh, Stephen our new secretariat who I just want to welcome today uh, he will be looking after the chat uh, I've also got Chris Davidson on as well from our policy development committee who may be able to answer some of the more difficult questions. Um, and of course, there's a chance after the event to uh, send questions through to our web, uh, sorry, our email address. And we'd be really happy to answer as we can. This webinar will be repeated on YouTube so you can catch up anytime. The slides will be available on the website after the event and we're also streaming live for the, for the first time so thanks to Stephen for sorting all of that out. We got there. <laughs> <laughs> we did, we got there so really good. So just um, yeah a welcome. Uh, we think at the GSHPA this is going to be the year of the heat pump and you'll probably be seeing that a lot on uh, some uh, social media. Um, we've got all sorts of exciting plans for the year. And those things are actually going to be um, discussed in the next few webinars. So just to give you a heads up, uh, we have um, Andrea Ellison, who's our treasurer, but also uh, working on our training and education committee. She's going to be talking about the education programme that she's put together, uh, which will cover um, key stages one to four. I'm not a te teacher, but apparently that is four year olds up to GCSE level, 16 year olds. And the work we're going to be doing with them, presenting in schools, doing um, teaching material and the apprenticeships from 16 onwards. Uh, in March, we're going to be talking to the chairs of all of our working groups, which includes standards, training, policy and marketing. So if you're a member, you can come and have a find out about what our different working groups do. <clears throat> and uh, maybe get involved and have an impact. And then in April, we're hoping to have speakers from some of our DNOs talking about things like flexibility, time of use tariffs, aggregation of loads and new connections, new electrical connections that is uh, specifically focused on heat pumps. So should be a really good programme and loads of different sort of things happening. Um, so we're really looking forward to um, the new year. Uh, it's going to be quite a different year, I think, to previous ones. And I'm just going to move on to the actual webinar that I'm doing today, which is all about policy landscape. Um, now, I've put a picture of a jigsaw puzzle there. With lockdown, I'm sure jigsaw puzzles have become very popular with people. We've certainly got had a couple on the go, well, I have. Um, and it very much feels like the policy landscape at the moment is like a jigsaw puzzle. And some of the pit bits fit nicely together and others you just think, well, I'm not sure how or where that fits. So today I'm going to talk about all the different policies that are out there in, in a you know, very briefly because we've only got a short amount of time. Plus, I'm aware that it's quite a wordy presentation today and I apologise for that. So I don't want to bore you to death. Um, but hopefully today we'll just give you enough of an insight of how quickly things are happening and all the different um, policies and consultations and subsidies and things that are out there right now for heat pumps. Um, in my own opinion, uh, I've found that since sort of October, November, people are suddenly talking about heat pumps in a way that they have never talked about them before. I've been in the industry 10 years as people who have obviously been in the, the industry a lot longer, probably say exactly the same thing. Um, so it's certainly a hot topic. I certainly don't have all the answers. So although I'm going to try and lead you through the policy landscape today, I don't have all the answers and I'm not sure who does, even in the government. So we will try our best to answer anything that isn't clear, but we're also happy to take this away and uh, find out more. Um, and I do have to say thanks to the Policy Development Committee, Steve, uh, sorry, Chris, Richard Bean and Paul Taylor, who have really helped me um, pull the different aspects of this together. 
So going back to 2018, I'm going to just take us a whiz through a timeline of different um, policies that have happened, the things that are in process now, and you can see how things are really so, starting uh, together. So back in 2018, we had the clean growth strategy, and it was said to be the heart of the UK's industrial strategy. Um, so last updated in April 2018. At that time, if you read the document, it's got lots of focus on power and transport, and there's a little bit of focus on heat. They talk about for the first time phase out of the installation of uh, fossil fuel heating during the 2020s. And they also mention further investment and reformation of the renewable heat incentive. Um, so that was nearly three years ago, no mention of heat pumps whatsoever, and a little bit of focus on heat. So fast forward to the end of 2020, um, all of a sudden we're starting to see interest in heat pumps growing. And in October last year, we had uh, two select committees one of them was the Environmental Audit Committee and one was the Bayes Committee on Decarbonising Heat in Homes. Quite a mouthful. 12 to 18 months ago, we would not expect to see select committees talking specifically about heat pumps. It just wouldn't have happened. And we would not have expected the national press to have shown any interest either. But we at the GSHPA and other sort of people that we're working with is definitely seeing a lot of interest in the press on heat pumps specifically. And you may even have read articles yourself about heat pumps, good and bad. Um, in October 2020, um, the Environmental Audit Committee um, had this review of heat pumps and some of the terms of reference are written down there, specifically things like what steps can the government take to increase uptake of heat, heat pumps? This is like really practical stuff. How can we ensure regulated frameworks are in place? What role should gas or hybrid heat pumps play? Um, and how can public awareness of heat pumps be improved? So we see here a big group of people talking about heat pumps at the highest levels, which we just haven't seen before. So fast forward on to one month later, November 2020, Boris Johnson stood up and published his 10 point plan for his green industrial revolution. Whatever you think of Boris or whatever you think about this, it definitely brought heat pumps uh, to the fore and people started really talking heat pumps from here. So it was all about building back better, supporting green jobs, accelerating our path to net zero. Point seven of his 10 point plan was about greener buildings. And there's this more detail about gradually moving away from fossil fuel boilers over 15 years. Specific mention of heat pumps, 600,000, which is this big touted number now, 600,000 heat pump installations per year by 2028. Talk about the Green Homes Grant, which we'll talk about in a bit. Uh, public sector decarbonisation scheme, homes upgrade grant and social housing decarbonisation fund were all specifically mentioned in his 10 point plan. And there's a little excerpt from the um, that point seven there on the right hand side. So they have this ambition um, for the 600,000 heat pumps. And they also mention here about the future home standard. Point 10 was about green finance and innovation. And although there's nothing specific in here about heat pumps, there's quite a lot in there about um, hydrogen and carbon capture and storage and electric electricity upgrades. They do talk about this green taxonomy, which is all about helping economists to invest knowledgeably in low carbon technologies, which of course is covers heat pumps. There's also um, discussion of the Green Jobs Task Force, which is about upskilling people to operate in a low carbon um, environment, such as we're going into now. And they have an example about the Green <coughs> Finance Institute, who launched the Coalition for the Energy Efficiency, Efficiency of Buildings and the Zero Carbon Heating Task Force. So talk of heat. That's what we're looking for, talk of heat. And just, just on that, I think there's still very, there has been very much a focus on renewable electricity when we talk about renewable energy. What we're seeing now is a massive focus on heat and decarbonisation of heat. So it is a big shift in the way people are talking about renewable energy. In December, we then had the sixth carbon budget released by the Climate Change Committee. And in that document, <clears throat> heat pumps are mentioned 64 times. Now, the document is actually um, 
448 pages long. It's a massive document, but heat pumps are mentioned 64 times and considering they were not even mentioned in the clean growth strategy, um, now all of a sudden we're seeing them really coming to the fore. And the recommended pathway by the CCC requires a 78% reduction in UK emissions from 1990 to 2035. And specifically in buildings, they point out that carbon emissions from buildings in 2019 represented 17% of total emissions, which is mainly from heat fossil fuels, so gas and oil. And how can this be reduced? It can be reduced through behavioural change, energy efficiency measures, and specifically fuel switching away from fossil fuels to low carbon alternatives. And they give very clear signals, sorry, they require very clear signals from government on fossil heating phase out uh, and rebalancing of gas and electricity policy costs, which is actually a really important issue when you're thinking about moving from a gas fired heating system to an electric fired or electric powered heating system. <clears throat> and their balanced net zero pathway, which is what they're putting forward, basically says that by 2030, which is obviously only nine years away, 75% of home low carbon heat systems should be heat pumps. And the little figure at the top right there shows how that could be. So here we are in 2020 on the left hand side. And if their balanced net zero pathway is followed by government, you can see that by 2050, you're talking about 25, 20, probably 28 million heat pumps um, being used in um, homes, new homes and existing homes. So this is obviously going to government, they are listening and as a result lots and lots of policy has come out on the back of this. So if you are either working in the heat pump industry or thinking about going into the heat pump industry, this is clear proof that this is the thinking. Now I'll come on to the how we get there at the very end but you can see here that there is some real fact and real drive behind <coughs> what we're talking about. December 2020 also, Energy White Paper. Now the Energy White Paper is 170 pages long. These are very hefty documents and I'm trying to condense them into little, little pieces that help you to understand how this jigsaw puzzle all fits together. Heat pumps are mentioned 36 times. So again, they are mentioned. Uh, and the key commitments for which we're interested in for in the White Paper are the growing the installation of heat pumps to 600,000 units. Again, the same, uh, wording is used in the in the 10 point plan a complete step change in electricity network upgrades and usage which is important for heat pump and electric vehicle deployment talking about time of use tariffs storage and smart meters when we, when they're discussing heat pumps and it's the first time that we see this two billion pound released for the green homes grant um, including the local authority delivery scheme of which they get a half a billion and there's one and a half billion for standard general green homes grant and they make it clear that actually only 1% of UK homes currently has a heat pump. So we have a big path ahead of us, but it's a big opportunity. It's a big opportunity. Uh, heat and building strategy, next one. That has not yet come out, although it is um, talked about a lot. It's due this year, possibly the end of this month. And that's gonna be a big one for us because it is as they talked about in the House of Lords in December. Uh, this lady, Baroness Bloomfield, um, said this is a key policy of government. We will publish a heat and building strategy that will set out the immediate actions for reducing emissions from buildings, including transitioning to low carbon heating. And it will uh, enable the mass transition to meet net zero 2050 emission tar targets. So although it's not out yet, this is the context of what's coming out into. It's, it's all about heat and it's all about low carbon heat want to look out for. January 2021, the consultation was released for the future building standard. The consultation closes on the 13th of April and it's the second stage of a two-part consultation on the changes to Part L and Part F. Now this is the biggest, probably the biggest deal that at the GSHPA we're working on in terms of policy. Um, all about changes to uh, conservation of fuel and power and ventilation, Part L and Part F. It includes a vision for non-domestic buildings from 2025 onwards, transitioning non-domestic, both existing and new non-domestic buildings from fossil fuels, high carbon to low carbon heating and hot water. Um, 
so the part L and part F uh, relates to both domestic and non-domestic buildings, which is great to see because there are also lots of commercial industrial buildings in the UK, not just domestic buildings. So we need to see this across the board. And it specifically says that heat pumps are anticipated to play an increasing role. Heat pumps are mentioned 43 times in this document, but one of the main things that's going to help with uh, the heat pump deployment is that maximum flow temperatures of 55 degrees C are proposed. And that's in domestic and non-domestic. Obviously at the moment, we sometimes have to battle. If you're doing a retrofit, you have to battle with trying to either get up to 80 degrees C with a heat pump, which is not recommended, or you have to um, at least think about replacing some of the emitters um, because of the higher flow temperatures in existing buildings. So um, having a building that's readily made with 55 degrees C radiators, underfloor heating and all that, perfect for slotting in a heat pump. So um, we are going to be doing an awful lot of work as the PDC um, up to April to make sure that we get as many comments into that as possible to make heat pumps come to the fore. And if anybody out there also would like to um, respond to the consultation, it's free for anybody to join in and anybody to make comments. And there's a little um, picture that I, take, I took from the consultation on the right, which shows by 2025, <clears throat> new homes will be built to the future home standard and new non-domestic buildings will be built to the future building standard. So um, it's, uh, something that they are obviously consult consulting on and they seem to be committed to doing, which is great to know. Uh, related to heat pumps, Green Heat Networks Fund, uh, that closed just at the end of last year and applies to England. It's the build on to HNIP. So HNIP is the Heat Network Infrastructure Programme um, and it's that has been funding the installation or part funding the installation of uh, all sorts of different heat networks. The Green Heat Networks Fund, very similar to HNIP, but it's specifically for low and zero carbon technologies. And one of the um, comments I took from the Green Heat Networks Fund document was that without additional support, heat networks uh, projects taken forward are unlikely to opt for low carbon heating solutions when gas CHP is available. And it's crucial that uh, this fund facilitates a seamless transition in support from HNIP and delivers low zero carbon heating solutions at scale. So that's the purpose for releasing the Heat Networks Fund. Again, government understanding that if they're going to hit net zero and heat pumps and other low zero carbon technologies are going to have to come in, they will have to fund it. And this is another way of funding another pot of money that's available. Uh, heat, this document confirms that heating buildings is one of the largest sources of UK carbon emissions, which we know it's around 42% carbon emissions. It specifically pulls out things like use of mine water, marine, aquifers, rivers, lakes and waste heat, which is perfect for heat pumps. In fact, actually, that's the only solution if you're using mine water. And although various technologies are covered, um, heat pumps are very high on the agenda, as, as are um, shared ground loops and ambient heat networks. So, you know, this focus is coming in, it's moving from where we were with HNIP and Hindu to now being in a new world of low and zero carbon and how the funding is going to be made available. And it all points to this is the place we need to be. Heat pumps is the place we need to be. That is due for launch. The fund is due to open in April next year. Now, we hope it does, <laughs> but we know from government, past the government stuff that sometimes things can go late, but that's when it's planned to launch. I just wanna very quickly talk about the renewable heat incentive. Uh, the non-domestic scheme absolutely closes at the end of next month. If you've had a COVID related delay, it will, you can apply for an extension, but the extension is budget limited and it's first come first served. So 1st of March, I think probably their website will be crashing as everybody's trying to get their extension applications in. Domestic RHI will be extended for one year to March, 2022. There is no replacement for non-domestic RHI, which isn't great for the industry, but that's the fact. There is a clean heat grant which will be coming in or is proposed to be coming in April 2022 to replace the domestic RHI and that will be a grant funded scheme rather than a, um, uh, an incentive scheme. Uh, we currently have the Green Homes Grant and the Public Sector Decarbonisation Scheme, PSDS. 
They are both related to COVID-19 and COVID-19 recovery. The Green Homes Grant is a voucher scheme uh, for uh, improvements to homes and all improvements must be complete by 31st of March next year. The PSDS on the other hand is similar, but it's for public sector bodies to fund energy efficient and heat decarbonisation measures. The PSDS closed last month, but there is talk possibly of more tranches of money being released as we go through this year. Unfortunately, unfortunately, um, they haven't been particular, they haven't gone particularly well. Um, I've put disarray there. The Green Homes Grant in particular seems to have, I, I don't work with the Green Homes Grant to be honest, but I have read lots of um, articles and things that just show it's absolutely not not worked out as, as they hoped. And I think because they didn't engage with industry, nobody from the GSHPA, as far as I know, none of the other associations were approached to have any input into this. And as a result, it probably hasn't gone as well as they anticipated. Um, can't really say any more about that at the moment, but you, most people on here will be aware of its potential disaster, but maybe they can rescue it, I don't know. Very quickly for people, anybody working in Scotland or thinking about working in Scotland, the policy landscape up there is even better for ground source heat pumps than it is uh, elsewhere in the UK. They've currently got four consultations, again, sorry for all the words, <laughs> but um, you can go and have a look at these online. There's the new build heat standard, which closes at the beginning of March, which says that all new builders must use heating, producing zero direct emissions at the point of use from 2024, very quick, very soon. And that is really exciting, actually, when you think about um, uh, no gas boilers, no oil boilers in new buildings, very quickly. Uh, the draft heat in building strategy, which is all about all buildings reaching zero emissions by 2045, so that's existing and new. Uh, low carbon infrastructure transition program, LCITP, these have been released before. This is the next one, and it's all about large scale heat decarbonisation projects, specifically talking about heat pumps. And then there's a consultation on Scottish skills for energy efficiency, which is about the skills and the skill gaps needed or the skill requirements needed to meet these strategies that they're putting forward. Scotland has made a big uh, statement that says they cannot meet its legislated climate change targets unless virtually all emissions from heating and cooling, it's the first time it's mentioned, buildings are li eliminated. That means that by 2045 zero emissions heating will need to be deployed across Scotland's building stock. That is massive that is massive in terms of ambition, but it's also a massive opportunity for us guys working in heat pumps. Um, I know obviously there are alternatives such as hydrogen, such as um, direct electric, um, waste heat and obviously biomass as well. Although biomass, well, yes, we'll, we'll, yeah. Um, it's a big opportunity for us. So we need to be there and we need to be taking this opportunity. And just to finish there, quick note on carbon tax. Some people might have seen in the news that Boris announced a possible carbon tax on meat, dairy and gas. Quite a nice mix there. Um, look, talking about shifting the levies from electricity to gas. At the moment, electricity is very expensive, which means that if you go from a gas boiler to a heat, a heat pump, your bills potentially will go up. But that's because of levies. Very expensive electricity, very cheap gas. That's another topic altogether. There are webinars that we've done on that. Um, I did see that that might now have been vetoed, um, but it shows that thinking in government is happening on gas and electricity costs and how they could be um, taxed potentially differently. We, we want to make sure people don't end up in fuel poverty, of course. So um, that's going to be a tricky one. So to recap, I can't believe I've managed to do all that in 25 minutes, but to recap, there is lots of talk consultations and plans which is positive for the industry it might be happening at breakneck speed because we're seeing a lot of activity suddenly being squished into a very short space of time from november to february you can see that so much has happened so much has happened if you compare the clean growth strategy pack in 2018 then nothing happened or not much happened at all then all of a sudden it's just gone you know everything's happening now but it is very confusing 
Um, it's difficult to keep on top of what's happening. It's difficult to know which grants are available, who's eligible for what grant, and which strategies and consultations fit together. Um, we struggle at the GSHPA to keep on top of it. <laughs> and uh, as I said at the start, I don't have all the answers and I'm not sure who does have all the answers. Uh, but we, um, yeah, what we need really is to see a clear policy roadmap from government. And we need to see the actual steps. So it's not just talk, it's actual real action because we have a bit of a gap now. At the end of March, non-domestic RHI finishes what's going to come from there what are the actual real things that are going to make people want to have heat pumps in the next year before the green heat networks fund starts things like that we really need to see what's going to happen there um, and hopefully the jigsaw puzzle will be completed during this year or at least it will become more clear during the year and of course this is the GSHPA we to continue to lobby uh, we are talking to Bayes lot a lot um, it's one of our key areas of development key areas of uh, focus for us um, and we can find out more about the uh, policy development committee in March when Chris Davidson is going to be interviewed about what we're doing there and how that works so <laughs> There we go. Um, those are the uh, current policies, the current consultations, of subsidies and uh, grants. I hope that's been useful. Uh, obviously, there's been an awful lot of information there and it's taken me quite a long time to sort of pull everything together. And as I say, I've had lots of help from people. So um, if there's questions, I'm really happy to take them now, if I can. If you are completely bamboozled, um, then take time to think about what's been said or read the uh, slides again. And uh, we can take um, questions, first of all, at the info email address, which is there. Or also Chris has offered to do maybe a five or 10 minute slot at the beginning of his um, policy development committee webinar. If there are specific questions that need to be asked, or uh, well, answered, sorry, um, then we can take them there. We can prep the answers, and maybe do a bit more research on specifics. So I'm going to um, hand over to Stephen. I'm going to just take a quick breath because <laughs> that was a lot of talking. Oh, minute, Laura. And so one question we've had, is there any support coming in for self-builders installing ground source heat pumps? The one thing I've seen is that the Clean Homes Grant will have the same rules as the domestic RHI. So if the domestic RHI supports self-build, new build, the Clean Homes Grant will do it the same. So that's the 4, 000, up to £4,000 grant towards um, uh, low carbon or heat pumps, basically. Uh, another question we've got, if the future building standard assumes 55 degree floor temps, how does it address Legionella? Mm, that is a good question, actually. Um, so we we know that, well, for, actually, no, the, the quick answer is, if we're designing a heat pump right now, and we have been for years, we usually get over the Legionella issue by putting in uh, an immersion heater into a hot water cylinder and then running that either nightly or weekly for an hour to bring the temperature up to 60 degrees or above. Um, it, that's not actually written down in law anywhere. Um, the, there is no updates to Legionella, the ACOP L8 um, on low temperature water, but uh, the Chartered Institute for Plumbing and Heating Engineers are currently working on um, hot water standard uh, and looking at how this is going to be <clears throat> how this is going to be managed. But we are already doing it and have been doing it for years. 55 degree, 50 degree C heat pumps with an immersion heater in the hot water cylinder. I will say it's not ideal because you still end up with dead legs uh, in the secondary side of your system. Um, but it's what's happening right now. There's nothing further on the questions now, Laura. Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna quickly check in the chat as well. Um, okay. Well, I'll give everybody a bit of time to just have a quick think. <clears throat> um, but as I say, we are very, very happy to take um, questions after the event because as I say there's a lot to take in there it's taken me an awful lot of time and I'm, I've, I've now got like a well, I feel like having a glass of wine now to get over that um, <laughs> but it has been very useful to me actually to pull those bits together um, 
one thing to say is obviously at the Groundswell Heat Pump Association, we are really interested to have more people um, sort of putting in their, their, their thoughts because we exist here at the association for our members. And we need to make sure that what we're doing is, is benefiting our members. So if, if you feel like you have something to offer on the policy development front and you want to have more input to that, um, then please um, put yourself forward. Um, that's uh, that's something that we would really encourage. And in fact, for any of the working groups, you know, we're not just here as like a higher higher than everybody else. Um, we do want to have people coming in to, to take more part in that. So I was just reading there, Mark uh, from Future Builds. Uh, we are future, we've branded 2022 the year of the heat pump. That's great to know. <laughs> and yes, it's exciting times. It's busy and confusing, but it's also exciting. So yes, um, if you're working in the heat pump industry or about to, then this is a great time to be in, definitely. <laughs> Robin says needs to be the decade of the heat pump. I think we might be there. Yeah, we might be getting there. <laughs> okay, if there's um, no other questions, then we can close the webinar. Um, but yeah, just to reiterate, any questions at all, drop us a note. We will be very happy to talk to you, to email you or to do some investigations. Uh, we really want to make sure that everybody's aware of what's happening out there in policy land because it has such a big impact on what we're doing. So, And yep, next week's webinar is Andrea Ellison talking about the education piece that we're doing, key stages one to four, what's happening there. And uh, yeah, we will hope to see you there. So I'll speak to you soon. <laughs>